All right, everybody, welcome back. So in this video, we're just going to first talk a little bit about setting up the platform so you can trade, right? Let's just kind of start with that. So I've got time and sales and I've got it filtered for different sizes. You never quite know the size you're going to need. It depends a little bit on what time of day you're trading, what instrument you're trading. Um, you know, if we look at the watch list, we can see that the MES has 75,000 contracts traded and the ES has nearly 60,000. So the MES is more liquid tonight. Um, on the NASDAQ, it's a big difference between 3,500 or yeah, 35,000 and then 127,000, right? So you can see it really depends on which contract, what time of day. So what I recommend is put on at least two different filters and then you know, maybe bump them until you finally start to see them move a little bit, but you don't really want to set it on a one all the time unless you're looking specifically for tape speed, kind of the, the quickness of how it's moving, right? You're not trying to read when you have it on a one, it's kind of moving too fast. You're setting it to a one to see how fast it's moving. Um, but yeah, set your filters you know, maybe have a bigger one that you don't really expect to see very often making a move. And then when it does, it kind of stands out. You can see there was a block trade. Uh, what we're doing with the three, maybe a four or a five, we're more looking for those sweeps, right? And then for me, next to those is where I have my dome because when I'm not necessarily looking for a trade, I flip that over to a chart, right? We'll just bring this back over to a chart as well. So yeah, you know, just kind of play around with the setup a little bit. You want to be diverse, right? So you can apply different products at different times. You can see what's going on. You're looking for that opportunity. Now, one of the things that I've heard people talk about is they would like to have a drawing tool to kind of help them out with maybe their stop size or, you know, do they think that that's an appropriate entry? How much uh, profit should they expect for the amount of risk that they're taking? And I'm a real big fan of using a risk to reward trade system, right? They say the road to riches is winning 50% of the time with a two to one risk to reward. Well, I, I use more than a two to one, but let's just say that I only wanted a two to one. Depending on your broker or the platform, you may not have some really great drawing tools, but hopefully you have something like a rectangle. So I'm just going to draw it here. It doesn't matter where I draw it, it's got to get it on the chart. Now I'm on the MES. And that means that every point is $5. So let's just suppose that I'm willing to put $25 on the line. That is five points. Um, well, let's make it an even number, right? $5 a point for four points is $20. So let's do that. So we'll double click on the box. And we want to look at the size first. Let's just make it a, a flat number. So four, three, four, five. And then we'll make this one a flat number. Four, three, four, two. But we've decided that four points times $5 a point is $20. And we want to go with four points. So we're going to go with 4341 and 4345. And that gives us a four point box. Okay, now I just I can just grab this box and I can drag it around wherever I want and I can identify where would my stop end up. Suppose the bottom of that box is the where the stop would go and the top of the box is where I'm thinking about getting into the trade. So if I thought maybe the bottom of this range is where I'd like to get in, I can set the box near the bottom of that range, say around 37. And I can visually see that my stop would be down here around 33. Well, I'm not near this low yet. So if I did want to go at least as low as that low to put my stop on, then I can see I need to try to target my entry somewhere near the top of this range. Okay, and, and we can turn this into a ray. You know, we can stretch it across. Well, I, I adjusted it. Maybe it won't be accurate now. Better go check. Yes, yeah. If you grab it and move it around the way that I just did, you may inadvertently change its size. So make sure you grab it somewhere along the middle, not on those dots that show up, right? So now it's a fairly good size box. So if I was looking to get in 
along the top of this range. And, or say I just wanted my stop above the top of that range and I wanted to go short. Well, I can set that box there and I could see that if I got in right now where that dotted line is, right? Around, that's my VWAP. If I got in as we were crossing below VWAP, then my stop would fit way up here. So it's just a little visual tool, kind of helps you visualize where your stop would be if you happen to, have, to be getting in without putting it on the dome to get in, right? And the same thing can be done with your profit. So if I wanted a two to one risk to reward and I've got a four point box, then I can go back in, click the rectangle just anywhere on the chart and maybe we'll even get fancy with it, change the colors a little bit, make it stand out as my positive trade, right? So we're gonna apply that and we're gonna make this box eight points since my other box is four points. And that would give me a two to one risk to reward ratio. So we're just gonna make this 43.30 and we'll make this one 43.38. And now I have an eight point box. Okay, so a four point box is my risk and the eight point box, box is my target, my profit. And now we can see what I would make or lose or where my targets would be, right? Not really what I'd make or lose. We already knew that in the numbers. It's just giving us a visual so we could ask a question. If I was to have gotten in around that VWAP for a move to the downside, where would my stop be? Would it be above these highest values? And we could see, yes, that would have put my stop above these two higher peaks, this micro double top. And then I could say, well, if I did get in there, where at on this chart would I be looking to get out? And do I think I can actually make it that far? Is there anything of concern? And we can see that there is some concern right around that 31 area. Because if we were to come down into that, we would first need to get through the most immediate pivot, which would be right in here. And then we would need to get below that and get through this to be able to get to our target. Now, those are two different areas where we could run across some concern. We may not be able to make that distance. So we wanna be prepared to perhaps fade the trade or you know, uh, get risk out a little early because we might not make that whole trip. But we can now visually see what is in our path to be able to make that trade possible, okay? And most platforms are gonna have at least some kind of basic drawing tools. So if you don't have a, you know, a, a rectangle with some color in it, maybe use a circle or try to just draw some lines anything that you can do. And even if that doesn't work, then, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll have to come up with something else, right? Um, on Thinkorswim, we use modified tools like the quant line tool or the uh, Fibonacci extension. Pick a drawing tool that you're no longer using that has measured uh, distances in it, and then use that for your risk and reward. But this short little visual right there really helps it helps new traders grasp the distance that they're trying to hit. And it helps you visually see on the chart what could be in the way if I was going to try to take this trade, right? And then when you're not using them, just drag them off to the side somewhere so they're out of your way. And that way, they're all ready to go next time. Me, I'm a fixed stop trader. I already know the size of the trade that I want. And I know what I don't want. I don't want to go too big. So once I've decided my stops, that's it. That's what I'm going to use. I can go smaller. I just can't go bigger. Now, that's my own personal rules. You come up with whatever you want. But this little drawing tool trick can really just save you a lot of time and angst by helping get rid of a lot of those questions that you might have about, is this a good trade? Where is my stop? Do I think that's an appropriate spot for my stop? Those kind of things. Now, the next thing is a little more broker specific. So you can see here that I've got two charts, but I don't have the dome. Well, in the upper corner, I do have a dome. I just flip over and now I've got this. And then I can flip back and I've got my chart. Well, I've also got a watch list. And this watch list is color coded to all of these different tools that I've got turned on. So that if I don't wanna look at the MES anymore and I wanna go look at the NASDAQ, 
well, now I'm on the NASDAQ. Okay, and everything just updates. So I'm not sitting there trying to change every one of these things over to the NASDAQ. It did that for me. So, you know, take the time to put your futures watch list together so that you can jump from product to product. Maybe set your tabs up so that you can go through different things like the dome or the positions tab. That's another good one to have on there. Um, maybe set the news in there, right? We can go to say the positions and we'll just drag that and stick it in there. So you can say, I don't have any positions open right now, right? No big deal. Um, some of these tools are bigger than others. So if you know that it's gonna be a, a, a tool that needs a lot of space, maybe put it on something like your charts and that way, when you do go to use it, it fits what you're trying to apply it on. So there's positions. Maybe we add something else like orders. If you're a person who likes to put orders on the dome, uh, maybe you check this at the end of the day, make sure you don't have any orders left before you log off for the night. I can tell you from personal experience to really, it's a disaster to wake up in the morning and find out you were filled in the middle of the night with a trade that you forgot you even had on the dome. And with the markets right now moving as far as they do in one day, it's very easy to overlook a trade that got left on the dome that didn't get taken off. So maybe the last thing you do at night is check that orders tab and make sure there's nothing on there. I did mention the news. Of course, you, you may be someone who wants to occasionally check the news without actually going in and um, monitoring the news all the time. So that's another thing that we could do. Just check the news, make sure that there's that there's nothing there. Wow, that looks nasty. Dollar twenty two in fees. My goodness. No, just kidding. Okay, so let's see what else we got on here. Uh, I did mention the news. We'll go ahead and grab a hold of that. Maybe maybe for me, I'm going to put it in this lower one down here. You know, that way I can occasionally glance at it. You know, not a not a real big deal. Uh, I get my news from other places. You know, but. Hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of different ways that you can set your chart up and still not give away too much space. Yeah, no, we don't want to put on any spread matrices. Uh, we got the performance center, the options chain. I don't trade options on this broker. I use a different broker for that. Maybe the activity log or, uh, you know, your, your accounts tab. If you're someone like me who uses multiple accounts, that may be a good one to use. And uh, yeah, I mean, that that's a pretty decent start right there. And that way, you're trying to use up as much real estate as you can without actually giving too much away. Now there's one other thing that I tend to use quite a bit uh, more recently than I used to. And it's this new Aqua Snap tool. Now the really nice thing about Aqua Snap is that it first, it helps things stay on top, right? So if I have a floating window, say like this dome that I have floating over here, so I have this dome and maybe I want to I want to go to Thinkorswim or some other place, but I still want to see my dome. Maybe I'm in a trade and I'm just monitoring what's going on, where I'm at. But every time I click on something, well, it falls behind and then I can't see it anymore. Uh, another thing is I can't see through it. So if I have it sitting in the wrong spot, now I can't see what's going on underneath that. Well, with Aqua Snap, we just give that a little bit of a shake. And now I can see through it. I can still interact with it. You can see I can uh, roll it up or down. You see what's going on on there and I can monitor my position. Also, it doesn't fall behind. Okay, so then I can set it in different spots. Maybe I bring back that chart that we were looking at there earlier. And now I can monitor my position and still see what's going on behind that. All right, so that Aqua Snap is kind of a game changer. Um, I like how it, keeps things on top for me and they don't fall behind. 
And then really, I mean, the transparency, that's just, that's phenomenal. I, I would like to be able to do something a little better with it. It's a little too light for my taste sometimes. That's a little bit of an issue that I have with it. But other than that, I really like it. It's a, it's a comfortable visual. Just kind of tuck it into a, a certain spot and leave it there. And I can still monitor my positions that way. All right, so we talked about, you know, the visual for the stops and uh, for our target profits of using the platform, you know, to set up your tabs so that you can bounce around through those different locations and a way to modify the dome a little bit. And then we talked about adjusting the filters on the time and sales so that you can more easily identify sweeps and blocks and maybe even tape speed if you wanted to give it just a little more space to where you could add one more uh, one more tape. So here's another one and I do have it set to one. Just give that a little bit of a shake. So now I can see time and sales set to a one. And if it starts moving really fast, well, that's just a really quick visual for me to be able to see that the tape speed has really picked up, right? And like I said, I, I don't even bother to read the numbers when it's set to a one. I'm more looking at the scope and the speed of the move. Because if the market really starts to pick up, we'll see it. We'll see those flashing colors. We'll see the tape moving really fast. That visual has a lot of cues in it. So I, I, I'm not really interested in reading uh, the tape when it's set to a one. I'm more interested in just seeing it move, right? And so putting it kind of a lighter color like that and setting it on a spot on the chart where it's out of the way, and again, I can click on my chart and it won't fall through. It's going to stay on top. So now I can see the higher time frame chart if I want to. I can see the chart I'm looking to trade, time and sales on three different filters, and I've got the dome to be able to get in and out. It's a pretty good setup. Right now, every broker is different. You may not have the exact things that I've been talking about here, but you're going to have something similar to it. And that's the goal, right? You want to get yourself set up in a way that's comfortable for you, take the time to really get to know your broker, right? That's, that's a, a real big deal. This is one of the absolute benefits of using paper, not proving that you made a trade and that you happen to be positive with that trade. Like, Yay, you made money in paper. Nobody cares. And I promise it didn't even help you any. You didn't learn anything by taking a paper trade and proving you made money. But when you're over there on that paper account, work on something. Work on getting a better entry. Work on timing your trade so that you get in with the flow of the market. Work on recognizing those sellers defending the top of a level or buyers defending the bottom of a level. You know, we really can see that in the tape. We can see that on the dome when they're refilling and, and stacking and pulling, right? Work on being able to see that. Work on places to add into a trade. You know, if you wanted to uh, to get in and then later on add to a winning trade, where would you be doing that, right? Kind of work on those situations. Think about where you would fade out of a trade. When you're on paper, don't just sit there and try to take a paper trade and prove that you made a dollar or, you know, you hit a certain dollar amount today. Like, well, you, you worked on it and you made $1,000 in paper today. It's absolutely worthless. You're not gaining anything out of that, right? So, uh, you know, just a short broker video. Hopefully this kind of helped you a little bit. Notice how the tape speed's moving a little bit faster as we're getting this rally up here. That's exactly what I'm talking about, being prepared to visually identify that change in tape speed. And we can keep our eye uh, on this filter. Maybe I've got it a little bit a little bit too tight, may want to back it off a little, kind of give us a little more speed. Uh, this is a lot of moves, but as we can see on the tape, I've got it set to a two and it's still just not moving, right? So there's not a lot of conviction in that. Maybe it's those bigger, bigger uh, pushes. All right, guys, so that's it. I appreciate your time. I look forward to seeing you at the next video.